Hello everybody, I am Angry Bird. Welcome back to a new Steel Division League cast by me. And yes, new, new message below. Thank you to all my Patreons. Um, I am introducing YouTube channel members as well. Um, so that if, or if it's not already out, that may well be out. It's just like Twitch subscribing uh, or pretty much like Patreon really. Anyway, there should be a little join button next to the subscribe and uh i'm sure you all know about that anyway thank you to all my patreon supporters thank you to uh special thank you to dindamir and gilbert everyone's support uh, monetarily is is just amazing and hopefully the long-term aim is that i can make more content for you guys the more support i get the more opportunity i'm able to uh, take time off from my real life work and supply you guys with content i mean i love doing this and hopefully you love watching as well well still division league so today we have the grand finals of division three of the still division league so we're going to be covering these finals uh the two competitors are jada boy and adler 3000 uh once these finals are done i'm going to be covering division two and I hope to cover the, the whole playoffs of Division 2. And then after that, Division 1 as well. So lots and lots of Steel Division 2 content on the way on this channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe. Make sure you don't miss any matches because I'm sure there's going to be some absolute corkers. <laughs> right, so let's jump in and have a look at the decks today. We have Jada Boy on the left-hand side, and if you don't know him, then um, he does stream on Twitch. So you can head over and check him out on Twitch and, and watch him play live. Um, today he is playing the Panzaleo on a Maverick Income which is probably going to be quite rare for these uh, upcoming matches, the playoff finals. Maverick is a bit of a rare income at the moment. So we'll see how it goes today, I guess. And what a strange deck as well. Barely any air. Uh, just the two Focke Wolf 190 A8s, which actually are really, really good fighter planes. Um, I discovered this kind of recently, but... For some reason, the Focke Wolf 190A8 is an absolute beast, uh, especially at ground strafing. Ch try it out yourselves, guys. Um, but yeah, that, that thing is a beast, so they are good fighters. But nothing in the artillery tab, nothing at all. Um, so it looks like a complete mechanized tank push with those light recon vehicles, a hell of a lot of them in, well, a reasonable amount in A9, uh, what 12 in total if you include those pumas as well we got 56 units of infantry which is tiny in uh <laughs> in uh, most of the 1v1 games we're gonna see but i guess in compared to normandy that's probably like the about the max that most <laughs> divisions used to carry even you know the infantry ones and we got 45 units of tanks so nearly more tanks i mean let's include the uh, five in the anti-tank tab because they're technically tanks so 50 tanks to 56 infantry units it's an almost one for one tank to infantry no commander which is kind of interesting we'll see how that plays out commanders did get price changes recently so we'll see how that all plays out over on the right hand side we have adler 3000 a fantastic player and i'm really pleased to see him in these playoff finals and um, because he's made the playoff finals for division three that does mean that he should go up to division two um all being well next season and yeah it'll be great to uh, see adler in more action i think in the past adler was uh, a player that i perhaps could have beaten but now i don't think uh, i would stand a chance uh, up against adler at the moment so yeah congratulations to him being in these playoffs and uh, i look forward to seeing more of him let's have a look at his deck he's got the uh, first polish infantry division 97 units of infantry i think that's much close to what we're gonna see in the majority of matches he's got a lot of light tanks so he's got 48 sort of light medium tanks with those t-34s t-34s and mediums um so how are they going to stand up to the heavier tanks that the germans get 
especially the Tigers, he's going to have to rely on the IL-2M cluster planes uh, to do the job against the Tigers. But Jota Boy, he did have quite a few AA uh, units in his deck. And with no real um, artillery or and no real bombers, you know, the support, the, the points that he's going to be spending on support are going to be spent on his anti-air. So... That just leaves the kind of Zis 3 gun in the main. The M42 gun can get side shots. It struggles a bit more against Tigers because they have that heavier side armor. But yeah, it kind of... Um, it may leave Adler with a difficulty kind of destroying those heavier tanks. It might be interesting to see the play around the center of this map. Um, around that deep valley swamp area with the infantry guns we tend to see both sides kind of relying on a lot of infantry guns to uh, combat each other across those great two kilometer range distances i did notice that yada had two cards of ig18s compared to just one card of 52p for adler so we could see adler get beaten out in that sort of two kilometer he infantry gun stakes and then once that happens yada may be able to use his overwhelming force of tanks to kind of protect his infantry whereas uh, adler's infantry might be left all alone who knows at this point i guess we've just got to wait to find out so the game is going to be Yarder Boy versus Adler. We're just waiting for the two players to kick off the action. And, uh, well, <laughs> what absolute perfect timing. <laughs> so let's just recap quickly. On the left hand side in blue is Yarder Boy playing the Panzalea on Maverick Income. Looks like he is going rather strong in the. Uh, center southern area of this map yeah pretty weak up top so it's going to be everything into the southern part for him he's going to be looking to make the attacks in the early game a and uh, b phase we got some map tag tags hopefully we don't get too many of them and then adler on the right hand side he's playing flatline income he's playing the first polish infantry division and uh, yeah, I mean, a flat defense across the board. So Adler is going to be looking to defend early. Uh, Yarder Boy is going to be looking to attack. And look at the IG-18s coming into here with the Puma uh, to support that push into the central town. Hopefully we get to see some great action in this game. Both teams kind of lining up. Adler did manage to cover himself off there with the smoke from the flamethrowers and... Yeah, did prevent those early kills from those IG-18s. And here's the battle that we were talking about. The 52Ps and the IG-18s are going to engage. The Puma is going to handle that. And actually, yeah, the 52P does not get that kind of uh, heat ammunition that the IG-18s do. And Adler will lose out in this kind of area unless he brings in some heavy reinforcements. But down here in the south, he has a big, big force pushing through this forest and could catch Yoda Boy off guard if he does push through so yarder's offense is completely into this central town he's pushing forwards with his half tracks trying to take that flag get the early 13 11 one of the 52 p's has gone down and adler is going to need to reinforce that position he brings in t34 e's to help support and at the moment i think they can do the job the Flak 41 is in here, which is going to be an early threat, but that's probably a good move from Jada Boy, protecting him before he brings in the heavier tanks and another one coming in now as well. More 52Ps ordered in, but really they're going to go into um, the same kind of action is going to happen. They are going to get overwhelmed by especially the Panzer 3H here with that fast... Mm, Maybe not. I think it's the Panzer 3N that I'm actually thinking of with the faster firing uh, gun. The Panzer 3H uh, still has that heavy... In fact, it's very rare to see a Panzer 3H. Let's take a look at this. It is actually quite rare to see a Panzer 3H. It's normally Panzer 3Ns that we see. Lovely, lovely. 
Right, back to the action after that little getaway there. <laughs> so down in the south, Adlar has actually uh, captured this southern flag, got himself, uh, well, equal to 1212 due to the capture of the central flag from Yardaboy. Looks like some advance up on the top of this map from the M3A1s, T34E moving forward, Strokey SVT, and the RG-18 should go down, reinforcing Panzer III Hs. They have to do a lot, though. They are outmatched by the T-34E, but it is going to be two against one up there. More Panzer IV Hs go up to defend that area. Down goes the half-track in the center, I believe from the T-34E here. We do have an SU-57 as well, trying to look to get any possible flanks. But look at this advance across the center. Um, very early armored presence and I really like this style of play from uh, Yarder Boy. Definitely something different, I think, than what we're going to see for a, a lot of matches. So, really nice to see it. SDKF said 250 slash 9, just covering across off the attack of the uh, Strokey SVT. Smoke thrown down by the Flemingworth. A fantastic play there. The SDKF said 259 does go down to the T34E, although may well have been the 50 cal of the M3A1s as well. They can damage those light half-tracks. SU-57 is engaging now. I believe it's against the RG-18 here across the hill. Actually, both of these units can take each other out here. So the uh, SU-57 is not, you know, out of harm's way here. He could go down to this RG-18. If the RG-18 actually fires, I think it's stuck aligning right now due to the constant barrage from the su-57 and it does go down so adler wins that one but i don't think that one was certain by any means m42 gun does come in now but it's going to get overwhelmed by the amount of he coming down onto it yeah immediately gets taken out does get the turret stuck on the panzer 4 h fuhrer oh an interesting choice here bringing the 82 more mortars to attack the flat 41 and i personally i'm not a fan of that choice I don't think mortars are heavy enough to deal with flat 41s. He does have two of them here, though, so it's better than one. I mean, <laughs> derpy commentary here. Two is always better than one. Is two ever not better than one? Someone in the comments, let me know. Is two ever not better than one? <laughs> Look at this uh, PTRS squad moving down south, but it is spotted by uh, either the RG-18 or... Yeah, it must have been the RG-18 spotting that. Actually, um reasonable spot there ptrs does try to uh throw smoke but yeah it was caught out in the middle of nowhere there but it does let adler know there's not so much down here just push forward with the t70s but he is going to come up against the panzer 4h the mortar is still trying to unload onto these flat 41s uh one of them the northern one did go down or did lose men to uh the 52ps up on this ridge I st I'm still not a massive fan. I mean, artillery is definitely the best counter to flat 41s, but not mortar artillery. It needs to be heavier. It's, there's just too much HP on those flat 41s for mortars to do the job. And up on this northern side, the flamers that Yarda had in here have been destroyed. But the counter-attack from a Yarder boy is swift. There aren't enough tanks here at the moment to engage against the four Panzer four hs and the Panzer three h as well. The 52P goes down, no heat ammunition. The SU-57 goes down. And it's going to be three T-34s against four Panzer four hs and a Panzer three h I think the Panzer fours are going to come off better here down goes one of them actually early on it might be a close engagement here down goes one of the t-34s i mean i would be surprised if adler oh down goes one of the panzer four h's i'd be surprised if adler manages to win that battle but i don't think yard is going to push past this little compound i think he just wants to reinforce the compound down goes a unit of pioneers in the half track bit of a loss there doesn't load the other units and adler's pushing forwards now wants to secure this top side prevent the reinforcement i mean he has to do so he's currently 16 8 down the panzergrens flank into this town and uh yeah completely cut off 
Adler's control of this area and the flags in it. Key difference here between Normandy and uh, <laughs> Steel Division 2. It doesn't matter. Any of these units here <laughs> just don't matter. <laughs> uh, Yada Boy has flanked. What a fantastic flank as well. I mean, I completely hand it to him. What a fantastic flank that is. Uh, it's a shame I wasn't here when it actually happened, but yeah, great, great choice. Here, look, the mortar is still engaging, now out of HE ammunition, and I genuinely believe they've not done one HE damage to either of these flat. Oh, there we go. There we go. They took out one man. So, yeah, I think that was the wrong response. It was the, the right in the sense of artillery is the counter, but the reason I'm saying this as well is because I played this year in Steel Division League. I played in Division 4, and there was a match where I was trying to counter a flat 41, and I brought in a mortar. I only had one of them, and it just did absolutely nothing. It did nothing. The, uh, the calibers just aren't heavy enough. Uh, you have to have direct hits. And as you can see by the, the mortar pattern here, you know, it, it's just not close enough. The mortars will do a great job at suppressing infantry um, and destroying infantry, but they just, they, they can't deal with the flat 41s. Big push down on the southern side from Yardaboy now as well. Lots of pioneers coming forward with those half tracks. Panzer 4H is supporting. And kind of surprised the IG-18 didn't move up as well. But, you know, he's keeping that back in reserve just in case. And Adler, I think he, he can't... He is pushing back. I think he can fight this position. But whether he comes out on top, I'm not 100% sure at the moment. Look at Yarder Boy's complete surround of the units in this town. Adler reacting with more T-34s. There's not a lot he can do, though, other than bring out T-34s. I think I'd like to see him... I, I don't know whether he's out of... Yeah, here comes a Zist 3 down onto this hill. This would be nice. I think I'd like to see him more bring in... Oh, it's, it's a difficult choice here. I think he has to have a mix of AT guns and T-34s because the AT guns are going to be better at dealing with the, the Panzers, the Panzer tanks, than the T-34s, certainly at range. But then he needs that HE fire coming down onto things like the IG-18 and the Flat 41s. Otherwise, the, the AT guns are just going to get destroyed. So I think it has to be a combination, and he is doing that, but... Whether he does it in time, who knows? Because it's 17 7 right now, 18 6. Five minutes left on the clock after that push to this flag here. It's it's this flag that's changing the tick. So back to 10 minutes now. But can Adler hold on? Because there's a push in the center here and. That M42 gun's about to go down. There's no way the Flamers can stop this push. And I love how Yarder Boy's playing around the compounds. And he's just staying out of range. He's just staying out of range so that those... Um, whatever troops are in here, he, he won't know exactly what troops are in there. But he doesn't need to go fight them. He just needs to get this flag. So we just go around it. And this is fantastic play. This is the kind of play that you want to watch if you're ever struggling to deal with really heavy tanks. Just go around them. <laughs> oh, in comes a hell of a lot of MG42s now to secure this center. And this is what I was saying before about he needs a combination because he has to have tanks in here to deal with things like the MG42s, the IG-18s. The... He can't really deal with the flak. He has to have artillery to deal with the flak. He has to have I... tanks to deal with... Um... The MGs, the infantry, that kind of thing. And he needs AT guns to deal with the tanks because the combined arms of Yarda is really defeating the uh, kind of infantry and tanks at the moment of Adler. But remember, I have, I have kind of forgot myself because it's so rare that Yarda Boy has that 180 points of income 
or has had it throughout this game. Why is this this icon here seems to be changed? Usually it tells me uh how long's left in each phase. So from the looks of it there's 7 minutes of B phase left. Is that right? <laughs> Caster problems right now guys. Caster problems. Oh, finally the Flamingo has come in and these can exchange kind of building to building and look how Yarder Boy does push forwards there. But overall, once those flamers, the Mirta Ognia, are discovered, they will go down to the weight of firepower in the area. So it was a good move by um, Yarder Boy bringing in those flamethrowers to, to kind of reveal the enemy units in there you know t34e coming up here are just just too much too much to deal with for him too much to deal with this must be um i actually feel like this must be quite frustrating for adler and he is 186 down i feel like the income choice that maverick really helps yard boy out but i also think it comes down to his style of play in the way that he launched all of this off with a very combined arms approach, whereas a lot of people would kind of launch things off with infantry and tanks. You know, with maybe one or two IG-18s. Uh, Yarder Boy actually kind of launched things off with infantry and IG-18s and flat 41s, and then he brought the tanks in to further um, kind of combine his arms. <laughs> And he's always uh, kind of reinforced with. He's not kind of got in the into the trap of only reinforcing single unit types. So only reinforcing infantry. If, in fact, if you look at this position right now, his infantry is kind of the least amount of units that he's got in here. Uh, usually, we see infantry if we look at this position up here being the largest amount of troops that a player has. This position up here are the largest. But Yarder Boy, I mean down here as well, it will be the largest. But Yarder Boy, yeah, his infantry is is kind of the least number that he has. He has more tanks, more support weapons, more AA than he has infantry. Very, very interesting playstyle. 18-6, two minutes left to go. I would be incredibly surprised if Adler managed to pull this one back. And yeah, there goes the surrender. I, I think he knew it as well. I think he knew it as well. And what a fantastic game to start us off. I mean, Yarder Boy picked a strategy that I don't think most players would be picking at the moment. And he played it fantastically well so hats off to him i'm sure that that approach kind of caught adler off guard i suspect he probably wasn't too sure what was happening because very unfamiliar in 1v1 circles right now at least from what i watch in the the, the topper levels of play So, Yarder Boy gets the victory. Congratulations to Yarder Boy. Adler commiserations this game, but he has more opportunities. This is a best of five for the grand final of Division 3 of the Steel Division League. So, there will be at least two more games um, for Yarder to get the victory. And if Adler equals a game, you know, it goes on. Best of five. You know how it works. What am I trying to explain it to you? So 1,800 kills to 1,000 losses. And I mean, I guess that was a shortish game. So almost nine, well, 800 points difference it is kind of quite big. But remember that Maverick income over flatline gives about 700 points worth of extra income by the end of B phase. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. What am I saying? <laughs> 400 points 
I think that's right, 400 points. So about half of that is, is just pure income advantage. Um, but definitely fantastic game. Let's just have a quick look at the kills for Yarder Boy, RG18, picking up those 52p kills. I think that was really important, and we talked about the early engagement. I think the fact that he had the supporting weaponry, the Flat 41, and the... Um, Kind of the RG18s, the, the tanks that came in just after really helped him combat those uh, sort of 52p RG18 battles that were bound to happen and always do happen on this map. I really do love this map. A lot of players really dislike it and uh, feel that it's unbalanced. And I've, I've had it in the past where I've, I, I'm not arguing. I feel like there is an imbalance in this map, but then in almost all Eugen maps, there is an imbalance because they don't do, you know, symmetrical maps. So there's always going to be an imbalance. But from a caster's perspective, and hopefully from a viewer's perspective, I really love this map. Just the difference in engagement heights and and the, the scenery... And the environment, I love this map. And I don't mind playing it because I love it. But yeah, some people don't. <laughs> uh, oh, look at this Panzer 4H. Taking out three T-34Es and an SU-57. Someone promote that, man. Great job. Great job. Another Panzer 4H. Taking out a couple of T-70s. Uh, but he does get the T-34 as well. Yeah, I think... Um, I think it was a great game to start us off. Hopefully you think so as well. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. We're going to move on to uh, further games between these two players until we have a winner. And hopefully you'll join me for that. Thanks very much for watching. Hit the like button if you've liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And yeah, check out the links in the description for my social media and uh, supporters. And come join me in the Discord and let me know what you think about the, uh, the games. Give me any feedback you want. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching, guys. I am Angry Birds. I will see you next time.